Hey what's up folks, in this video we're going to be looking at 4 more variations for a pair of glasses illustration which you can easily create. I'm going to walk you step by step through each technique in particular and if you haven't seen the video in which I show you how to create a standard pair of glasses, I recommend you watch that first, link in description below. Let's get to it. Alright, so the first variation we're gonna look at is the Hydro Dip. Starting with the standard pair of glasses to which I just added another layer on top, select the circle shape and let's change the color to black, and I'm just going to be creating some random circles here, some smaller, some larger. Don't need to worry about anything, there's no rules to this, you can just aim for a similar result to what you see me doing here. Once you have a group of circles, just go ahead and select all of them, and press Ctrl or Command G to group them, and copy paste them 3 or 4 times. Now grab one of the groups and select the twirl tool, which you can find here under wood tool by right clicking on it. Let me also double click so you can look at the settings. I'm using 100 by 100 pixels for the size and 50% for the intensity. Pause the screen if you want to copy paste these settings or feel free to use whatever settings work best for you. And now with the twirl tool selected, all we need to do is click several times in the circle group and as you can see this deforms the circles making them look like some paint got mixed in and diluted into some water. If you're not familiar with the term, hydro dipping is basically the technique of mixing some paint on a container of water, the paint flows to the surface creating a paint layer, then you submerge any object you'd like to color in this container and then just take it out and let it dry. That's hydro dipping. Once you're satisfied with the way your smudges look, just drag the group on top of the glasses and enlarge it to just about cover the entire frame, making some additional small corrections if necessary. I'm dragging the finished groups here to the side so we can use them in just a moment. And I'll just repeat the same process for the other groups as well. Once all four groups are done, open up the glasses layer, expand the glasses group and go ahead and select just the frame. Do a control or command C to copy and then let's lock the glasses layer and move back to the hydro dip layer and paste the frame. Let me just paste it three more times, one frame for each hydro dip group. Next we're gonna position the paint, let's call it, behind each frame. And what we're gonna do next is a very simple process called masking. Some of you might be familiar with it as you encounter it in any photo editing software. In Adobe Illustrator, in order to create a mask, just Ctrl or Command X to cut the paint group and then open up the transparency panel and click Make Mask. Now click on this black square which is our mask and then Ctrl and Command V to paste the paint. And just position the paint over the frame. Let me check the invert mask button, since it's a black color, illustrator would not show it. Basically what is black is considered a negative space and whatever is white or of a lighter color is considered a positive space. For the next one, let me just change the color to white to show you the difference. And same process, Control or command X, select the frame, click on the mask, click on the mask thumbnail and Control command V to paste the color splash. Position it behind the frame and after making any adjustments as needed, click on the frame thumbnail to exit the mask. Once all four colors are done, let's drag them on top of each other to form a single group and then select all of them and go to align, make sure the align to selection is checked and align them both vertically and horizontally by clicking on those buttons. This ensures they are perfectly stacked on top of each other. Let me bring this over here to our white artboard to better see the colors because now we're going to be adding the actual colors to them. This is the fun part, start by selecting each individual clipping mask group, then go to edit, edit colors, adjust color balance, hit preview and start playing around with the sliders. And repeat the same process for all four colors. Now let's group them together by selecting all of them and doing a Ctrl or Command G on your keyboard. And let's unlock the glasses layer and copy paste the hydro dip on top of the glasses and drag it on top of them as well. Now of course you can make some small adjustments like I'm doing here. I'm selecting each individual color and through the transparency menu I'm going back into the mask to reposition the color splash a little bit because I just want to ensure I'm covering all the areas where there are some larger gaps. Once that's done, let's name our Hydro Dip group and lastly we can select it and edit all four colors at once. Feel free to play around with this and obtain some more varied results. 
and here's how they would look on our NFT model. Look at all the color variations you can obtain off of this method alone. And for a bit of a realistic touch, let's just open the glasses layers and select the frame, duplicate it and drag it outside of the group. Position it behind the glasses group, change its color to this very dark gray and set the opacity to about 50% and drag it down a little bit. This creates a nice shadow underneath the glasses. Bonus content, with the Hydra Dip group selected, you can go to Edit, Edit Colors, Convert to Grayscale, and then Edit, Edit Colors, Convert to RGB. Then open the Transparency menu and choose Overlay. You get this nice subtle texture which you can of course tweak to your liking and here's how this would look like applied to our model. Next one up we have the spots variation. This one is very quick and easy, start by grabbing the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle somewhere on your artboard. We're gonna be using it just as a guide so no fill color but leave a stroke visible. I've also added a background color so we can better see the spots because that's what we're going to do next. No stroke for the spots, I'm selecting this light grey for the fill, I wouldn't recommend going with the complete white. And then just start drawing some random circles similar to what we did for the hydro dip but this time just confine them to the space of the square. You'll see in a moment why this is important. Just draw some random circles, some smaller, some larger, making sure you are distributing them relatively equally and they fill the entire space of the square. Once that's done, you can delete the square and then select all circles and group them by pressing Ctrl or Command G on your keyboard. Then go to Object, Pattern, Make. This pulls up the pattern dashboard and let's first name our spots pattern. Using the settings here you can play around with how the pattern is distributed and formed, you have plenty of settings to choose from, just pick the one of your liking. Click on done once ready and in our swatches panel alongside all the existing colors you will find a swatch with the pattern you just created. We can now delete the circles group since we no longer need them. Now open up the glasses group, select only the frame and to duplicate it use Ctrl or Command C to copy and Ctrl and Command B to paste them back. And move the duplicated frame on top of the glasses on the artboard. And also within the layers panel move it outside of the glasses group. With the duplicate frame selected just click the spot swatch to apply it. And there you have it. Just move it back on top of the glasses and look at the result. Very simple and effective with very little work. And of course you can play around with the colors of the spots as well as with the color of the frame for more variations. Another cool style would be the diamond crusted, pretty easy to achieve if you know the right technique. First thing we're gonna do, grab the polygon tool, set a no fill and for the stroke width turn it down to the lowest possible, that's 0.25. Now let's zoom in here a little bit. Click on the screen to open the polygon menu, for the sides type in 3 and for the radius set this to 2 pixels. This will create a small triangle. Now just duplicate the triangle by doing a Ctrl or Command C plus Ctrl or Command V. Right click and go to transform, rotate and set the angle to 60 degrees. Hit OK and now unite the side of the triangle with the other one like you see here. Now just duplicate the original triangle and bring it on top of this other one here. Select all three triangles, duplicate them and right click to go to transform, reflect, vertical. And once again this time transform, rotate and 60 degrees. Hit OK and stick this side to the other like you see here. We should now have a basic diamond shape and you can press Ctrl or Command Y on your keyboard to switch to the outline mode. This allows you to verify if the lines are completely united, it should look like this, a perfect shape. Now select this group and let's give them this light grey color here. And we can now turn off the stroke completely. Now what we're gonna do for each shape, we will adjust the color a little bit to differentiate between the sides of the diamond. Go to edit, edit colors and pull up our trusty adjust color balance. Hit preview and for this first side I'm going with minus 5% for all three colors. This creates a darker shade of grey. For the next one below it I'm going with minus 7% overall, then minus 10% for the side that's at the bottom, then minus 7% again and for the next one and finally minus 4% for the last one. Leave the top side as it is, basically I'm trying to express how a light source coming from the top would be reflected on the faces of this diamond. Now that's done just copy the diamond and place it somewhere here over our glasses. And once again here towards the middle section of our frame. 
We are using them as endpoints and we're going to create a row of diamonds equally placed between those two endpoints. To do this, go to Object, Blend, and then Blend Options, select Specified Steps, and let's do about 50. Then for orientation, I like to go with Align to Path, but you can also leave the first option which is Align to Page. Now go to Object, Blend, Make, and this creates a row of diamonds. Now grab the Direct Selection tool and click the row of diamonds with it. You'll see that it will reveal a path which has two anchor points at each end. Click on one of those end anchor points and click this button here that says Convert Anchor Point to Smooth. Now we have two handles that we can play with. Do the same for the other anchor point and now it's time to start playing around with the handles to find the proper balance. Note that they control both the curvature as well as the spread of the shape so you might need to do a bit of tweaking until you're completely satisfied. Once that's done just duplicate the blend and bring it underneath the first one. Then duplicate for the other side as well making sure you do a transform reflect vertical to mirror the other side. To expand the blend groups into shape groups, select all of them and go to Object Expand. Now we can group them into a single larger group. And to cover the middle portion, apply the exact same process. But you know, change the specified number of steps to about 10 because it's a smaller distance. Make sure they curve nicely and the distance between them is relatively equal to the distance for the left and right side so there are no major discrepancies. And finally, duplicate the blend, then expand them both just like we did for the left and right sides and group them into the same larger group as the other diamonds. And that's it! You can definitely go crazy and cover the entire frame by repeating the exact technique, but do not make this video one hour long, I'm just sticking to covering the top portion only. I think it also looks pretty cool as it is. And here's how they would look like on our dummy NFT model. And last but not least, we have the wood variation. This is also a pretty simple technique to achieve this look, so let me show you. First, we're gonna grab the line tool, set no fill, and for the stroke, make it one point. Next, we're gonna locate the middle of the glasses here. If you have smart guides turned on, this will be pretty easy. Then just draw a line to cover the whole frame on one side. From this menu here, select wood profile 2. This makes the line thinner in some places and thicker in others. Next, with the line selected, go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Transform. Hit Preview, set the number of copies to 100, and then for the vertical movement, do about 4 pixels, and hit OK. This will distribute the lines to cover the frame entirely from top down, and now go to Object, Expand Appearance. Let's drag this over here, and hit Ctrl or Command H to hide the outlines, and now let's ungroup them, so Object, Ungroup. And now again, Object, Transform, Transform each. Make sure both Random and Preview are selected, and then play around with the vertical and horizontal sliders. This will basically reshuffle the lines a bit to obtain a more natural look. You can now group them back by pressing Ctrl or Command G on your keyboard with all the lines selected. Next, right click on the Width tool and select the Wrap tool. And let's double click it to adjust the settings. I'm using 100 by 100 pixels for the size, and for the intensity, let me bring this down to 10%. And by clicking with this tool on the lines, just drag them upwards and downwards a little bit to create some dips and curves in those lines. This mimics the natural fiber of the wood. Now go back and right click again on this tool and pick the twirl tool. And just do some short clicks to twist the lines a little bit, replicating the knots you see in natural wood. Let me zoom in a bit here so you can see the result. Next, for the fill color, set this to white and click on the glasses to expand the layers, select only the frame, do a Ctrl or Command C to copy and then Ctrl or Command V to paste. And let me drag this here outside the artboard, let's pull up the rulers, that's Ctrl or Command plus R on your keyboard and we need to locate the exact center of the frame. And we do have an anchor point indicating it, so zooming in here, click on the ruler on the left side of the screen and drag it to bring out a guideline. It should have this bright blue color. Now we're gonna do a simple mask just like we did for the Hydro Dip method. Just click on the lines group and Ctrl or Command C to copy and then selecting the frame, open the transparency menu and click Make Mask. Now click on the mask thumbnail and Ctrl or Command C to paste the mask in place and position it over the right side of the frame. You can also draw a Ctrl or Command H to hide the outlines. 
So now making sure we're not exceeding the guideline in the middle, just position this over the frame however you'd like. I'm trying to find a nice position that would best bring out the wood texture. Once you're satisfied, just copy paste it using the keyboard shortcuts and reflect it vertically to mirror the other side. This is a common practice in woodworking, where they would split down a piece of wood and use the mirroring sides for objects that are symmetrical. And for the same purpose, to respect the symmetry, we need to make sure that we have all the lines aligned perfectly with each other. It might require a bit of tweaking, but eventually you'll get there. With the mask selected, let's bring up the adjust color balance menu and start playing around with the color so we can obtain a dark brown color, or nevertheless something close to a natural wood color. Now position this on top of our glasses frame, make sure it's perfectly aligned, and then select overlay from the transparency menu. Lastly, let's change the color of the frame to something that resembles a wood color. And feel free to tweak and adjust the color of the mask as well, which I'm sure you figured out by now represents the wood grain. I find this is usually a bit darker than the rest of the wood. And there you go! Here's how it will look like on our NFT model. And of course, for multiple variations, you can play with the colors to express different types of wood like oak, chestnut, mahogany, or anything you can think of. You can also obtain a painted wood effect as well. Thanks so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like to save it for later if you'd like to try out some of these methods yourself. And until next time, good luck and happy drawing.